Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording and today I'm gonna to show you one tip to balance your lead guitar and lead vocals in your track. We're gonna be talking about lead lines today, but before we dive in, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process as a whole and really start to hone your workflow, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist. It's a simple PDF that will guide you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without the hassle and without the guesswork. It is completely free and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and take a look at this guitar and vocal. Sometimes you will have a lead guitar line that is going while the lead vocal is going, whether it be ad libs or licks and fills happening in between verses or in between vocal lines or even during vocal lines, or whether it's a big outro where there's a lead vocal soaring and a lead guitar going at the same time. It can be tough to get a good balance going between them and to get one to sit right with the other. Whether you want your lead vocal out front or your lead guitar out front, it can be tough to balance them together. I'm gonna to show you one way that I've done to fix that, and then I'm gonna show you an alternative that can be for more broad strokes that I use on this particular track. The easiest way to do this without automating, so you could go in and you could automate your lead guitar to come in in between vocal lines or to come up when the vocal's not there and then you could automate it down during vocal lines. Instead of going in and doing all that long and tedious work on your vocal or on your lead guitar to get it to sit right, let me turn off the automation I have on here. You can just put in a compressor and use a side chain with your vocal here. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're throwing a compressor on our lead guitar here. And we're gonna go into our verse section here. So we have our lead guitar going at the same time as our lead vocal. Let me play you what that sounds like before we start working on our guitar here. You can hear our lead lines going at the same time as our lead vocal, and they start to fight each other a little bit. Now, I don't wanna just pull the volume of my lead guitar down because it does have to come up for prominent lead lines. You can see here at the end of the song and during our intro. So I don't wanna reduce the volume, otherwise I'll reduce the volume in those sections as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce the volume just when our vocal's going. So even in little sections between our vocal our guitar can come up and have room to breathe without stepping on our vocal. We're gonna use sidechain compression, so I'm putting a compressor here on our lead guitar. I'm gonna turn on our sidechain feature, and then I'm gonna use this little button here to pick our send point from our lead vocal here. So that'll create a send on our lead vocal, sending at full volume into this compressor here. Now I usually like to set my attack somewhere around 15 milliseconds. It's fast enough that it steps on our guitar when our vocal's going, so our guitar doesn't get in the way of our vocal, but it's slow enough that it doesn't uh, get rid of our transient or any kind of attack or picking that we have with our lead guitar when it comes in. Release, I like to usually set it somewhere around 120 to start, and I can adjust it depending on how slow or fast I need this compressor to let go in between lines. Three to one is a nice gentle or medium ratio to start with. Uh, it's nothing too subtle and it's nothing too aggressive on our lead guitar. We're gonna shoot for somewhere between negative three and negative six to deep, negative six dB of compression on our lead guitar while our vocal is going. So what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see our vocal coming into this compressor and as we pull the compressor down, it's gonna compress our lead guitar here. Take a listen.
doing about 5 dB of compression on our lead guitar here, but you can hear it lets our guitar come up and breathe in between our vocal lines but while our vocal is going. We have about 5.5 dB of compression here on our lead guitar, so you can hear it in the back if you're listening for it right, but it's not up front, it's not fighting with our lead vocal line. Now, if we go to another section here, so we can go right before our lead line here, I want you to take a listen how our lead guitar steps back out front while our lead guitar section happens. So while there's no vocal, our guitar comes back to normal volume, but while the vocals go in here, and you can see as the end, as we go into our final chorus here, we'll have that 5D, 5.5 dB of compression on our lead guitar so it takes a step back and doesn't fight with our vocal. Let's take a listen to this section here, going into our solo section and coming into our final chorus. Watch our compressor and listen to our lead guitar line. You can see the little ladies in their gowns when you You can see while our vocal's not going on our outro there, or on our break lead line here, no compression is happening on our lead guitar. It's free to be at the volume we set it at, so it can be out front, so it can be a lead line. Now when we step back into our final chorus here, we get that 5.5 dB of compression to tuck our lead guitar behind our lead vocal, so our lead vocal becomes our main presence, but we have a couple pieces here. We have a strum here, here and here in between our vocal lines that has the room to step up because our compressor has let go of our lead guitar. That's what we're doing with our side chain compression. Pulling our lead guitar down while our lead vocal's going and then when our lead vocal lets go, when there's no singing, our lead guitar comes up and it has room to breathe and shine in between those spaces and then while there's no vocal going at all, our lead guitar comes back up to normal level to be the front presence line. That's the way to do it if you want to be a little bit more articulate with it, if you want it to be a little bit more thorough. Now, if you want to be gentle with it, if you want more broad strokes, let me turn back on my automation here and show you what I did for this particular song. For this particular song, I didn't feel I needed the lead guitar to be jumping up in between lines. It wasn't doing that many fills. It was doing a little bit more strumming, a little bit more rhythm playing during the verses while our vocal was going and then it did our lead lines here in between during our breaks and during our outro. So if we zoom in a little bit here, all I'm doing on our lead guitar is while our vocal's going, I'm pulling it down 3 dB. And then during our lead lines, it comes back up 3 dB to our normal volume, which is at 2.5. So we're at 2.5 above zero, and then when our vocals kick in, we're going down to negative 0.5. So I'm pulling the lead guitar back 3 dB during our verses, during our choruses, while the vocal's going, so it sits a little bit back more into the mix with our rhythm guitars. Take a listen to what this sounds like. We'll do the same area here going into this break and going into our final chorus. You can see the little ladies in their gowns when you
So we're somewhere near what we were doing with our compression, right? Here we're pulling our guitar back 3 dB during our vocal sections, but broad strokes, right? I only have a couple times. We have our intro, we have our big verse and chorus section here, our break for our lead guitar, final chorus, and outro. So just a couple automation moves to make sure our lead lines are up front, and then our rhythm guitar parts for this lead guitar section sit back with our the rest of our rhythm guitar parts and they don't step on our vocal. This gives me the opportunity to set two different levels. I can set a rhythm level for this guitar and I can set a lead level for this guitar. And I could go back to the negative five and a half. I could pull that back that far in the verse or if I wanted a little bit more in the verse, I could pull it up a little bit more, but it won't be intrusive and it won't step on our lead vocal. Let's review our two ways here. Main way to be a little bit more articulate is with our sidechain compressor, right? So we're sending from our lead vocal into this compressor, and then we're compressing our lead guitar based on the volume from our vocal. I'm just pulling it back about five and a half dB while our vocal's going, and then in between our vocal lines, it lets our guitar come up and have a little bit of room to breathe, and then while there's no vocal at all during our lead guitar sections, our lead guitar steps back out front and has its space to shine. Our second way here, broad strokes, just using automation, gently, so only a couple sections here. During our lead lines, I have the normal level it's set at, which is 2.5, and then during our verse and chorus section here and our final chorus, I'm pulling it back 3 dB so it tucks back in the mix a little bit more. I hope that was helpful for you. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can get your copy by clicking the link in the description below and start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.